And today with Mr. Rexu, let's go cuckoo for kukris. Now, I purchased this kukri back in April of 2016. Now, mind you, this is not my first kukri. Uh, my first kukri came from a well-known company based in Ventura, California. <laughs> if you need me to give you some more hints, just uh, ask in the comments. So, the warrior culture of the Gurkhas in Nepal is legendary. For a couple hundred years, the battle cry of Ayo Gurkhali, the Gurkhas are upon you, have put terror in the hearts of England's and the United States, you know, the Allies' enemies. It's a, it's a wonderful thing when you have Gurkhas with you because, because their reputation is such that people just don't want none of it. They're like, nope, hard pass. So I got this from kukriblades.com. This is known as Kukri House. There are many Kukri manufacturers. Uh, the guy who came up with the Kukri House, he was apparently in the military over there in Nepal. And like I said, I'll put the, I'll post all the information for you. So there was a Gurkha fighting in Afghanistan. And he was talking about how the traditional jungle Afghan, well, the jungle Kukri, uh, clash with their uniforms that they were wearing in that general area. So they came up with this. This is a uh, Indian rosewood instead of the black horn. And of course they went for a lighter colored leather. And here is a brass end cap. There are two smaller knives. I take this one as a sharpening steel. It's, it's very, very blunt. And there is a secondary knife to do other small tasks. Uh, I actually had Mr. Tom Veff sharpen this, and this is, it's not necessarily the best heat-treated piece of sharp metal that you've ever seen, but it does have a bead on it, so it'll last for a little while. And let's go ahead and open this up. I'll let you take a look at the back. Uh, everything is leather. Everything is leather. And no, I do not plan on resheathing this. I'm going to keep it the way it is. So, here is the jungle Afghan from Kukri House. See the brass? Now, I might not have the largest hands in the world, but I don't have the smallest. So, you can actually, you know, conversate with the maker and ask him to make them, maybe you would want the handle just a little bit longer for Western hands. Now, look how thick this thing is. This is somewhere there is a vehicle missing a leaf spring because this is really, really thick. In fact, let me take this out. Okay, now we're, now we're getting serious. Let me zero this out. So, when we come over here and open this up, that's 0.367 inches. And that, that continues quite a bit till you get down towards the point and it goes 0.322. Okay, so this, you can baton with reckless abandon, and damn, this is one thick kukri. And let's go ahead and pull out the old measuring tape. We're gonna say roughly from stem to stern. Yeah, not bad for a, an aquatic references from an army guy. Uh, we're gonna say 15 and a half inches with around 10 inches of blade. And we might call that actually nine and a quarter of actual cutting surface. You're like, what is this? And then everyone says, good question. All right, there you go. <laughs> so many, so many uh, opinions on what this is. Uh, what I've gotten out of it is whatever it used to be made for, they kind of forgot. So there you have it. So the reason why I'm gonna show you this 
<laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'm going to show you this. Is this is what I'm going to be basing all of my other cookery references off of. And that's why, you know, I'm going to put the stats up on here after I, I switch off of this. Then I'm going to show you something. Well, something special. Okay, I'll be right back. Please enjoy the descriptions. So now that we have the traditional, quote-unquote, traditional kukri, I know that there are going to be people with their own opinions on what is and what is not a traditional kukri. That was the kukri I have, so that's what I'm basing it off of. Uh, feel free. I mean, if you want to have a good time and you want to nerd out on the warrior culture and tradition of the Gurkhas, please do. I'll be right there with you. But now what we're going to be talking about is a collaboration, a set of collaboration knives between Jason Knight, who is, who was a Fortune Fire judge during season one, and he is an ABS Mastersmith, uh, rating along with uh, B.R. Hughes Award for the best knife by a Mastersmith candidate. And the caveat of his designs is he has a harpoon accent. You can look at a lot of his knives, you will see this beautiful harpoon accent. In my opinion, I like that. So, he did a collaboration with Doug Markaida. So, he does a Filipino martial arts called uh, Kali. And please do. I'm going to put links to all this stuff so you can go over there and look at it at your own leisure. And they had, they got together. Now, mind you, they got together and had it manufactured in Italy with fox knives, and I love fox knives. And without further ado, here is the MK Ultra Kukri. Now this originally came with an Italian made leather sheath with a belt loop and some D-rings. I didn't like it, didn't care for it, don't even have it anymore. Um, the retention on was bad. Sure, I could have uh, put in a snap, but that's not how I roll. So I have this made by Red Hill Sheaths. We'll take a look at how everything was put together. We're gonna go ahead and pull this out. Hey, I don't, no, the, the whole goal during these whole things is not to cut myself. So we'll look at that harpoon accent, the fuller. And there is the logo for Night Knives. Flip it over. Doug Markaida, Fox Knives, Italy, D2 Tool Steel. Here's the thing about Super Steels. There have been so many Super Steels that the ones in the past aren't even remembered anymore. D2 Tool Steel is reliable. And that's why this has a black Cerakoted blade. And the swell, it keeps your hand where it's supposed to be. You can come up here. Mind you, it doesn't have any jimping. That's okay. It's okay with me. Now, when you look at the influences of Jason Knight, and then you realize where Doug Markheide comes with Kali, you'll understand the use of this blade. Put this here for a minute. And... Um, let me take a look at this. Overall length is 15 inches. Blade, uh, Cerakote, blade coated in black Cerakote. The handle is black. And when we look here, let's pull the Nepalese one out. It's just as simple as this. This is no slouch, but it's basically roughly, you'd have two of these to make the width of this. This is a lot more lively in the hand. You really, when they when they call this like a hatchet sword in some circles, you know there's really no doubt 
in mind that it's it's kind of true. The weight forward design of this cougar is really, you, once you get it in your hands, I'm not gonna cut myself. <laughs> Sorry, kids. You could really tell that it is truly a hatchet. Could you take this outside and cut down trees and do all kinds of bush crap? Oh, sure, sure you could. Um, I'll let you see how much this costs and then uh, you make your decisions. So here is that. The next ones, now I got these two knives from Tactical Elements. Now they do have a Mark II, a ver two, <laughs> you know, the second version. So this is the V2 Ultra Kukri folder. This one is in black. It is a flipper. And it does a really good job. See how nicely that fits in the hand. They did a really good job. Once again, we look at here. Fox Knives Italy, Doug Markaita, Jason Knight. And it's basically just the little brother of the Mark V Ultra. So this is a linear lock. It, well, it's a frame lock. Sorry about that. It's a frame lock. And it does a really good job. So, with that over here, well, we also have this. There, they did a, you know, Fox Knives. You did a really good job. Now, mind you, there is another one with a green canvas handle. Uh, I am not getting that. <laughs> I, I think I already have a good enough representation there. And my wife is shaking her head up and down saying, no, no, please don't get all of the colors. <laughs> and though it'd be tempting, I'm not going to do that. Now I'm going to put up the descriptions for all these for you to look at your leisure. And then we're going to come back and look at one more thing. So you're saying, Mr. Rexu, uh, what could you have to balance this out? I'm glad you asked. So there is this. Now, mind you, this is called the Exclusive Night Elements V2 Ultra Kukri Fixed. And let's go ahead and open this puppy up and take a look. Thank you for your service box. Have a nice life. So we have the large fixed, we have the, the pocket knives, and we have a mid-ranged fixed now, and you can see the Kydex sheath. These are rubberized. Pull dot. Pull dot, come on. Pull dot for me. Oh, those are really on there. Okay, there you go. And if you look in there, you can actually see what it says is 1.75, 1.5, 1.25, and I figured the other one would probably say two. I do believe that means belt size. She can wear this scout style. Okay. <laughs> and once again, you could tell that Mr. Rex, who does all of his own stunts live on camera, so you know it's real. So you can wear this scout. You can wear it on your front, you can wear it in the small of your back. Ambidextry, <laughs> ambidextry, there's my other new word that I just came up, ambidextrous. You take this, flip it on the other side, you can right pull, just to set up our left pull. And without any further ado, let's pull this out of the sheath. And there we go. Fits nicely in the hand. And talk about a, a fistful of knife. Let's set it up in comparison to the folding knife. And then, here we go. Let's do this. If we're gonna do this, I might as well do it right. So you can see the size comparisons. Here, I don't want 
want this one to feel sad so we can get into the family picture too. So this will give you an appreciation of the size range available to you for purchase. Once again, I will put this up for you uh, to view at your leisure, uh, the particulars. I'll put the links for tactical elements. Now, mind you, this comes in three versions. Uh, black G10 with black blade, black G10 with stonewash blade, and green canvas micarta with black blade. And here we go. Fox Knives, Italy. And then there's Jason Knight. Well, did you go cuckoo for cuckoos like I did? I hope so. So, of course, this is when I'm supposed to ask you to like, share, comment, and subscribe. It uh, really helped me out. You know, I'm, uh, I don't know, trying to get out there. I want, want to do more things, just like you want to do more things. Uh, thank you to my fellow YouTubers, uh, Backyard Ninja. You know who you are. And uh, once again, have a nice day. Now, here's a little story, a Mr. Rexu exclusive. So, last year at Blade Show West, Mr. and Mrs. Rexu went to the show, and we actually got to meet Mr. Jason Knight and his daughter, Tiger Lily. Uh, Tiger Lily has her own uh, forging uh, business going on, and she just got done building her own forge and all this stuff, and it's, it's all on the internet. I do... I uh, suggest you go take a look at it because she does a fine job. Uh, hot steel must run in the family. So while we were over there uh, visiting with them, uh, they had some hats to give out. So what did we do? We, we asked for a hat and we asked them to sign it. And well, gee whiz, they had forgotten to bring uh, Sharpies to sign their hats. So Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Rexu decided to take a quest and we went over and we bought some Sharpies. And we got our hats signed, and then we let them keep the rest. And throughout the rest of the show, we stopped by and got some pictures with them. And um, I'll say about posting up some of them for you. And it was just, he's just a really nice, down-to-earth guy. Now, mind you, uh, later in the uh, show, as we progress doing our other uh, extracurricular activities, they had a Chef's Nights competition, and one of the awards, you know, one of the, the prizes for the people in the, in the audience was to actually win an opportunity to go to Mr. Knight's forge over in Tennessee and forge a knife. Oh boy, you know, I really wanted that, but it wasn't meant to be, of course. But uh, it was just really nice to be a part of the process and to meet the larger knife community in general. And I hope to get to do that someday with you. So once again, have a knife day, and we'll see you again soon.